anchors up, sails it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing right, Jared. How are you doing this lovely evening? It is actually quite lovely. I don't know what's happening in North Carolina right now, but fall fell it's- here here in Ohio. Um, oh. We're getting this 50 degree, not not like 50, but like. Yeah, and welcome back, Kyle. Austin thanks. says welcome back. Um, thanks, and he, thanks, Austin, for uh, for filling in here, for uh, keeping Jared grounded here while I was out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, grounded is probably... Is, is it funny that I'm an adult, but I still was like... <laughs> I was grounded. Uh, Austin should become your third co-host. If we did that, Kyle would never get to speak. <laughs> That's true. That is true. <laughs> uh, right, I, I forgot. I, I for, uh, Yeah, uh, it's fall now. The, the temperatures are cooling and we're having fun. OK, whatever I was saying before, it's, it's over now. Um, Kyle, it's time to it's time to preview Toledo. It is time to know your enemy. It's time to know your enemy, the Toledo Rockets. Kyle, first impression of the Toledo Rockets, go. I hate their colors. Ooh, (laughs) strong start. I hate their colors. Strong start. Good start. I like it. And everybody listening to this podcast should agree. Unless they're hateless. not, not, not Not a good choice of colors being a team from the state of Ohio. Yeah, but it's Toledo. Like, they kind of got one foot in, one foot out. Yeah, I will say, though, I I do like their shade of um, blue better than the other shade of blue that's north of them. But either way, Toledo, <laughs> Toledo coming into this. Kyle, game, let's talk about two, color theory some more. <laughs> uh, two and O. Oh. And a lot, a lot of people will look at Toledo like, oh, it's, it's just a Mac, it's just a Mac school. I mean, why why is Ohio State playing in a Mac school? It's actually a pretty legit Mac school. <laughs> we'll just I'll just put that out there. I think if you look at a lot of the previews for for the year, Toledo was projected to be the best Mac school this year, and and projected to be about a ten win team as well. So. On one hand, yes, it's a Mac school. On the other hand, it's it's a de- it's a good out of conference non power five team to play. Yeah, I mean, of the Mac schools, it is like currently the best one. Um, now here's the thing though, uh, Toledo being like the presumptive favorite to win the Mac isn't new. I feel like they're the presumptive favorite to win the Mac most years. Um, Unfortunately for them, despite that, they actually haven't won the title or even their division since 2017. They they always sort of find a place to trip themselves up. So, but, but this is a team with talent, Um, but by, 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 by Mac standards. By Max Sander, because uh, they've uh, let's see, where's this stat? They've had the number one rec- uh, number one rated recruiting class five of the past six years um, among Max schools. If I didn't already say that, um, so they're they're the Alabama of the Mac, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to go with that, <laughs> the Alabama of the Mac. Number one rated recruiting class for five of the past six years. I think, like, take the conferences out of the equation. I think that stat is also true for Alabama. Uh, uh, they, they, uh, I think they're actually, I think there's actually two. Because I think Texas A&M got it last year and Georgia got it either the year before or the year before that. So, but mm-hmm. regardless. Um but for you to say they're the Alabama of Max, they have to actually win their conference. Uh, that you know, Kyle, that's a valid point. Maybe they're the Texas A and M of the Mac. There you go. There you go. That's better. So yeah, let's 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 get to know our enemy Toledo here. Right away, 
anybody knows Toledo here, it's 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 their quarterback. Their their quarterback, uh, Daquan Finn, he's been just lights out so far this year for for Toledo. He's he's their quarterback. He's their leading rusher for the team. And if you know Ohio State and mobile quarterbacks, more often than not, it's Ohio State tends to have some issues. It's uh, you, we haven't we haven't seen it like yet with this offense though, right? Um, a couple this other defense. notes about, or excuse me, this defense. A couple other notes about the MAC. Um, Kyle talks about their offense. Uh, they led them uh, in 2021. They led the MAC in scoring with uh, basically 33 and a half points per game, um, and. Uh, they only turned the ball over the entirety of last year, seven times. It's pretty darn good. That's, that's real good. Darn good. And so far this year, uh, their scoring differential is uh, ninety-two Ridiculous. to ten. Uh, they shut out LIU. Who? Uh, I I. I looked it up. <laughs> so for no, not lower Indiana. Honest to God was actually my first thought too. It why I, why I was like, I bet this is either lower Indiana or lower Illinois it is honest to God. My first thought too, Austin. Um, and nope. No, it's long Island university. Long Island university. And, ten, and uh, not including you, Jared, but 10 sloop cap points who can guess what their um what long island's mascot is i'll take an iced tea please i'm assuming that's the answer <laughs> to the question the, the mess, mess. <laughs> it's a good answer <laughs> good answer but no uh, uh <laughs> go ahead excuse me the islanders, islanders. how many more how many more <laughs> new york based teams can you name although that would be a good one i, I give you that kyle what, what's 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 the what is it? The sharks. Are there sharks in New York waters? I feel like they're in warmer waters. Probably. Yours. Uh, one of yours was better, Austin. One of yours was better. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, their George other said, opponent was the University of Massachusetts. Who's always been a top five of worst teams. Bottom <laughs> five. One. Bottom five. Uh, yeah, but hey, give them credit. They are at least an FBS team, unlike unlike the Long Island University. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and here, here's the, uh, the uh, Massachusetts actually scored on them. Um, mm -hmm. They're the Minutemen Jared relates. Funny. Funny, funny, funny. Yeah. Uh, Long Island University did nothing against them. That that game was zero to thirty seven. Um, interestingly enough, though, and I think this might be an issue for for Toledo, even against the uh, Long Island University Sharks, uh, they were four for fifteen on third downs. What? How are you four for 15 on third downs against the university I've never heard of? Noel's licking his chops. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> now, that yeah, being uh, that is interesting. Yeah. I mean, they still had over 400 total yards, over 200 passing yards, over 200 rushing yards, like literally everything else about this performance looks great. Uh, the one thing that, well, they had nine penalties for 79 yards, which is a recurring issue that goes back to last year. They were heavily, I think the have the most heavily penalized team in all of FBS last year. Um, so that also could be an issue for Toledo uh, this Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, now to the Massachusetts game. Um, good news, bad news. Uh Bad news, they allowed Massachusetts to rush over 200 yards, 205 to be exact, uh, over, under. We're not to that part of the show yet, Stuart. Um, 
but they did run the ball a bunch of times. So it actually only ended up being like a 3.8 yard average. And they only passed the ball, Kyle. They only passed the ball for 48 yards, Massachusetts. Uh, Toledo yeah, has I mean, yet to give up more than 100 yards passing by an entire team this year. But Jared, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, though, how many how many attempts did Massachusetts actually attempted on um, to pass it? I don't know. I that that's I'm, not in my notes. I'm, I'm going to say whatever your number is. Take the under. <laughs> or the over. Uh, I'm no, looking moving, quick. Moving, I'm, I'm moving on. We're moving on. Yeah, 17 times. They only passed it 17 times. So there you go. That's still a terrible. Kyle, 17 attempts for 48 yards. That's still terrible. That's still mm -hmm. horrendous. Yeah. 2.8. Close, Austin. But yes. Uh, all right. Um, let's get to know some of the players. I've already mentioned uh, their quarterback, Daquan Finn. He's, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to say it early, Jared, but he's he's my um, uh, player to watch for uh, for Toledo. What do you, 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 you giving away the bag for? Come on, man. I we mean, have sponsors we need to tease. No, we, no, no, we don't. Sponsors. No, we don't. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. The Quan Finn should be on the Sharks. Damn it, Austin. Stop Where it. Where to go? Stop it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Who else here? I'm, I'm pulling up my notes here. Are the other players on the team here, they they tend to run a dual, dual running back here in uh, Jaquez uh, Stewart and, and Penny Bone. Who have each had 19 and 14 yard um, attempts so far this year, roughly about the same yardage. So, but but your your main threat from Toledo is going to be the quarterback who's leading the team in in yardage and rushing touchdowns. He, he's your he's your threat on offense. That being said, they 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 have four running backs on the team with more than 12 carries already gonna play like the sharts listen Stuart. i'm not i i don't i don't know what long island university is up to right now um i i, I didn't know they existed before this week mm -hmm. um the uh so back to daquan finn real quick as kyle points out he's actually the leading rusher on the team the guy's a runner um a lot of a lot of you might hear on other shows on other shows you might hear the term dual threat dual threat no he's no. not a dual threat he is a runner <laughs> um he, he's very responsible at the ball he doesn't throw a lot of interceptions um but he's only throwing it like he's he, fast as fuck oh yeah he is he, he's a great runner but he's a runner against massachusetts jared he oh. he was un, he was under 50 percent completion it was 12 for 26 yeah. 12 for 26 against Massachusetts. He's a runner. Uh, he, yes. a, a terrible, uh, a terrible yards per attempt. Um, he's a runner. Uh, he yep. did throw for 18 touchdowns last year, only through two picks. So, you know, he is, like I said, he's responsible with the ball. Uh, that being said, he, uh, he ran for 505 and nine touchdowns. So I'm going to say he's he's going to be over that this year. Stuart, did someone die or are you trying to refresh the stream? What you doing, buddy? All right. Uh, and some of the receivers here for Toledo. We got uh, Jaquan Newton, uh, Demir Blinkumsey, and the tight end Jamal Turner. Or a few names to keep an eye out for on this Toledo offense. Fun fact, Kyle, the three guys you named are the currently the only players to have multiple receptions on the team right now. That's why I listed them. <laughs> no, that's why I listed them. Oh, if you scroll down in my my. Yeah. 
There you go. There you go. I see your face now. <laughs> no, I, I I didn't scroll anywhere. Um, okay. Toledo, um, Toledo's wide receivers are a bit weak right now. If we're being honest, um, they lost three of their best wide. Or well, I don't want to say that. I want to say they've been without their three best wide receivers so far this year. Um, Isaiah Winstead transferred to East Carolina. Matt Landers transferred to Arkansas, and Devin Maddox. Uh, has yet to play due to a hamstring is, uh, issue. Last I looked, and we're recording this on Wednesday night, so things can change. Last I looked, he's probable. So you might see Maddox make his return in, in this game. I, I I would keep him out if it, if it was me. Save him for the max season. Don't be stupid. Exactly. But uh, he is currently listed, last I looked, as probable. Uh, that's a very 2022 Ohio State thing to do. Just uh, lesser versions. Yeah. Of um, good Denzel Burke prep work. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we'll see if he can, you know, get things going. So kind of like Bama receivers. Uh, no, Bama has receivers transfer in their uh, lead as wide receivers transfer out. Um, But you never you never know. You never know. Nope. Yeah, so big multi-headed running back situation, as Kyle pointed out, especially if you include the quarterback. Um, Kyle, do you want to talk about their defense some? Yeah, there's there's two players in particular I think that really stick out to me, and that's uh, Dallas Gant, their middle linebacker, who already has 20 tackles for the season. And um, their defensive tackle... Uh, Yes, Dallas Gant does play for him. Yes. You think Gant will sit out? And the other person was a defensive tackle, uh, Dejuan Johnson, who who leads the team in tackles for loss already. Yeah. Um, so just to give you some background on this defense um they led the mac in scoring defense but they literally the toledo literally led the mac in both scoring offense and scoring defense last year yet didn't win their division not 100 sure how that happens um don't know yeah uh but yeah they only gave up uh 21.8 points per game last year uh, they were second overall in yards per game, allowing about 350. Um, one of their best players on the defense, uh, outside linebacker Jamal Hines, uh, had 10 sacks, 88 tackles, and 15 tackles for loss last year. Uh, and he, like I said, is, of course, returning. Um, the opposite side on the other edge is... Uh, Deshaun Johnson, uh, he had four and a half sacks and 12 and a half tackles for loss last year. Uh, Jackson Barrow is their middle linebacker. He had a bunch of tackles last year. And uh, they have a pair of safeties who are uh, returning to the squad, who are uh, all conference safeties from last year and combined for nearly 150 tackles last year. Uh, and all of those guys are returning, if, if I didn't say that individually. Uh, eight starters as a whole return for Toledo this year uh, for the defense, that is for Toledo's defense. Um, and then they also, uh, Kyle me uh, mentioned that they have Dallas Gant on the squad. Uh, they also added Maryland transfer linebacker Deshaun Holt, uh, who is both big and fast. He's a, he's a very big, very fast man. Um, they also uh, returned both of their defensive tackles who were very productive for them last year. Uh, Judge Culpepper, which is like a that's like a solid A on the name scale. Um, and <laughs> Kavon Butler. 10 out of 10 name, uh, 9.2. 9.2. I mean, when you got when you have people like Steel Chambers as a linebacker, that's 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 above 
That's above uh, that, see Judge that, Cole Pepper. That's a ten out of ten, especially considering he plays for the Silver Bullets, and his name is Steel Chambers. Good God, that's a ten out of, 10, out of ten. That's a twenty out of ten. Hey, that's a, that's not mathematically possible. That's not that's not mathematically possible. It's ten out of ten. Uh, it, technically, it can be. There no. Is tw- tw- <laughs> It can't be. Jared. I'm 110% committed. No, you're 100% committed. Stop it. <laughs> Does not exist. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, any, anybody else you um, want, want our listeners to, to know about Toledo here? They, yeah. Uh, they have some offensive line issues right now. Um, they should have been returning a pretty good offensive line this year. Um, they, I think they've returned either four or five starters from last year's squad, um, but they have lost Tyler Long to a season-ending uh, ankle injury. I believe it was a broken ankle. And right tackle Mitch Berg uh, is going to be out for several more weeks. So, what could have been should have been a really good offensive line is um not right now uh so we'll see we'll see how that works out playing one of the best defensive lines in the country for for Toledo yep all right anything else jared before we get into our um into our picks here no nah, let's let's get into it all right uh, when do we start who, talking about Chip Trainum just nuking uh, kickoff return? I uh, he he's supposed to be on kickoff return. Uh, that was said uh, during press availability. Well, let's let's see. Yeah, pre- yeah, interviews, press availability. We'll see. Math is transitive. Sometimes it's transitive. All right. Uh, we do not have a guest picker this week, so let's let's jump right into it, Jared. Ohio State player to watch against Toledo. I'm going Steel Chambers here. Um, not only is he a 10 out of 10 on the name scale, uh, but he we're playing a mobile quarterback this week. Uh, having a, a guy like Steel Chambers, and it won't just be Steel Chambers. Um, you're going Jack Sawyer. I was about to say Jack Sawyer out of the Leo position will be doing some some quarterback spy as well. Um, but you keeping the quarterback contained and getting some tackles for loss and not letting him try and take over the game on his feet will be a big deal. Kyle, by the look on your face, did uh, did Austin and I infringe on your answer? I was going to say Jack Sawyer, but, you know, I'm going to. I'm going to go a different route. So I am looking here, looking here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay with the linebackers here. I'm going to go with everybody's favorite linebacker, Tommy <laughs> Eichenberg. Listen, Austin, Austin's extra salty. He's extra salty because Gangland pointed out that uh, they look like they're twins, essentially. <laughs> I've they are that. essentially <laughs> twins, Austin and really aren't though. Yeah, you are. Sorry, it's 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 canon I, now. I am going with Eichenberg for my player to watch here. Okay, who do you got on the enemy player to watch, Kyle? I, I stepped on your toes last time. I'll let you go first this time. Who who you got? Who you got on the enemy player to watch? It's Daquan Finn. I mean, it makes sense. That is the answer. That is the answer. Um, me, I'm going to go with, I, I think the best player on their team is outside linebacker Jamal Hines. Um, I'll, I already said this. I'll say it again. Uh, last year had 10 sacks, 88 tackles. And uh, of those 88 tackles, 15 of them were tackles for loss. Uh, I think he's the best player on the team right now. Uh, if the offense is trying to get things going again, especially 
uh, from a passing standpoint, trying to get some rhythm going again. Uh, and the last thing they need is last thing they need is a uh, pass rush. And that's, that's exactly what uh, Hines is there to do. Key matchup. Kyle, I think we, I see, I see what you have in the notes. Uh, I mm -hmm. think we kind of have the same answer. So I, I wrote uh, quarterback versus spy. Uh, you wrote linebackers versus quarterback. Uh, go, go ahead and explain your answer and I'll let you know if we basically have the same answer here. Yeah, it's it's the linebackers. Exactly what ugh, <laughs> um, exactly what you were saying, Jared, uh, the linebackers are going to have to spy on uh, on the quarterback here. So, yeah, it's the same thing. But I, I have the linebacker spying because you, you got the defensive backs, you got the safeties who can cover the receivers and uh, their tight end as well. And it's going to be the linebackers to contain uh, Jaquan. Jaquan, sorry. Ben. Uh, yeah, I, I put it as a uh, spy because I feel like you'll have, you know, Jack Sawyer or some other guys out of the Leo position, probably playing some spy as well. You know what I mean? So I just, I tried to make it a little more broad, but also a little more specific at the same time. But yeah, we have the same answer essentially. All right, Kyle, Ohio state is favored by 31 and one half points. Who do you have Jared? I'm taking Ohio state. Um, they're getting JSN back. They're getting uh, Fleming back. I think that the banged up offensive line for Toledo, Toledo is going to be a huge issue for them. Um, I know Finn is a good quarterback uh, as far as his, his running ability, but like he's a track guy. He's a track guy. And I feel like, one good hit. One good hit. And I, I, I don't know how good his day is going after after that. Also. From Toledo's standpoint, they seriously just played. A team that is terrible by FBS standards and then a team that is terrible by FCS standards. They are up for a Jared. shock of Jared, what they what? are about to experience as far as a difference in competition. Jared. We're talking about Toledo, not Michigan. God. Uh, he will finally get a shot in the bright lights. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He will. Right, I think so he will fin be finished pretty quickly. Y'all are a bunch of dads making dad jokes in the chat right now is what's happening. And you, you miss Stewart's he, about that. He's fin Nikki. I, I did see that one, uh, but you booed at him. So I kind of figured that was that was good. Austin <laughs> said that he can't wait for the game to be fin ished. And then he said Ohio State wins uh, 55 to 14, which is very similar to my score. Mm. So, Jared, my my first two weeks, I Toledo has played, played a tougher schedule than Michigan, to be fair. Toledo might be the only team to not play a tougher schedule than Michigan to this point. This is true. And, th and that is saying a lot. So week one, Jared. Yeah. Week one, I did not have Ohio State covering. In week two. And they did not, co and they did not cover. And then week two. And then week two, I also did not have Ohio State to cover. And Ohio State ended up not covering. So here we are, week three. I I've picked Ohio state both times and I've yet to learn my lesson. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm going with Ohio state finally gets a cover here. Ohio state finally gets a cover this week here against Toledo. Now they're getting all the kinks out of their, out of their off season. They're, I think they're going to hit the ground running here and they're just going to just be lights out against Toledo and then Toledo gets some, get some crummy scores towards the end here. And I, I think Ohio state does cover not by much, but does end up getting a cover. And I have 
49 to 17. Uh, I have it at 56 to 13. 56, 13, I think is where I have that. Um, it, yeah, yes, it's very nice, Esquire. Um, uh, Kyle, it was right there. Yeah, he was so close. He was so close. Just so close. Three so, point off. Three points off. Do you, do you want? Do you want to amend it? It's real, nah. real easy to turn that forty nine into a fifty two, Kyle. It's okay. It's okay. This is what I'm sticking with. Okay. Um. I saw something. Oh, uh, Stewart says I'll ride or die with the cover every week. Yeah. Damn right, Stewart. Damn right. <laughs> Okay, uh, that is it for our predictions. I know we have some Ask Sloopcast, uh, as yep. well as Austin's over unders, which are which are in the Sloop in, in the Ask Sloopcast section. So I I did not put them in the chat or in our notes here, Jerry, but I'm gonna go through our Ask Sloopcast questions here, starting with Buckeye Zach. He says, "What were you when Toledo shot? Where were you when Toledo shocked?" The team up north. I remember where I was. Uh, I remember where I was for the Appy game. I don't remember specifically where I was for the Toledo game. I'm trying to remember. Was that the one that I thought we were at uh -huh. a game? I think we were at a at a Ohio, an actual Ohio State game. Like no, physically there. We were we are we are at my little cousin's game in Pickerington. Because we are having a fantasy draft later. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I, I remember there was a game and towards the end, like everybody was inside under the under the stadium and watching the game. And I don't know if that was the Appy State game or no, this was, was this was this was some else. little this was some little kid games. There was no stadium. It was a field with chalk. And, no, 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 and no, traffic no. counts. Uh, there, there was a different game where Michigan was about to lose, and okay, either they did or game. didn't. And we were all huddling around TVs in the shoe. I, I can't remember what it is, but either way, I digress. Um, let's see. Looking down, looking down. Um, there's some questions about other teams here that we'll answer in our next episode. Uh, which player for the Buckeyes is your spotlight against spotlight against Toledo? Sorry, say it again. I think which player for the Buckeyes is your spotlight against Toledo? So I'm, yeah, I mean, like Steel Chambers, uh, the other guys who are going to be, um, yeah, we, yeah, we we answered it, but yeah, I'll, I'll reiterate it. Like the probably the more important question here, Jared. Yeah, why is Toledo game a night game? Money. What else you want me to say? Uh, I, this is Fox's first opportunity to to have Ohio State. This is the first time. It's kind of weird. They've yet to play yeah. on. They've yet to play on Fox because of circumstances. Uh, so, like, why not put them in prime time? Yeah, I guess. Uh, do we have Bob and Scott sightings on the field this Saturday? I. Last I saw the injury report, I don't know if Bob's available. But we saw G Scott last week. But by the way, that injury report is um can't be official because I don't think Ohio State uh, releases the official injury report until like the day of. Injury reports in college are worthless. So, yeah. I I I don't know. Uh, if Bob's healthy, he'll get in, is what right, I'll tell um, you. Let's see here. <laughs> is uh, Esquire, and I think somebody mentioned this already in our in our live chat here, is Chip uh, Trainum, the secret special team weapon that will finally deliver um, Kyle's kick return touchdown. It doesn't even have to be kick return. It could be punt return, just a return. Well, the, I think the punt return is still a mecca. Yeah. And I, and I think he will be the one to do it. I know. I know Austin. I, I've watched that 
I watched that play. And, oh, okay. Uh, well, then now I do feel bad because, yeah, we were because uh, the Ohio State game was the social screen, and we saw it go back, and then we were like, "Oh no, Kyle missed it." <laughs> Uh, then it got called back, and we kind of had well, there a was two pen- there was two penalties. There, there, there was, was two, two penalties, penalties in that play. So, Either not only way, did the uh, return get called back, but the entire uh, punt was voided. Yeah, I think I ended up. I think the. Yeah, I think that it ended up being a field goal. So instead was of it? a punt, yeah, I think it ended up they, being. A did field they get a field goal, goal on that drive? Or for um, for Arkansas State, yeah. All right, um, all right, it is time for some Austin over unders. All right, CJ, CJ Stroud's last snap in the game over under six minutes left in the third quarter. Over would be spending more time in the game, and under would be spending less time. Um, I'm gonna go over. I think you think he's trying to, I think he's trying to, I agree. I think they I think they need to get synchronized he and the wide receivers. So they might be out there a little bit longer than than we want them to be. Yeah, I'll say over as well. I'll say over. By the way, Kyle, I want to say this real quick. Um all but Austin uh, correct me if I'm messing this up. They've all been under except one so far. Just something to keep in mind. Every single Austin Every every single Austin over under has been under except for one so far. Just something to keep in mind. And Austin has confirmed that that is in fact a stat. All right. Catches by true freshman wide receivers at two and a half. Under. I'm going under. I am going under. Ohio State sacks by defensive ends set at two and a half. This one will go over. You you got a mobile quarterback who's going to want to make plays and may get tackled behind that line of scrimmage for a sack. So I'll go over. I have to go under here simply because the defensive ends currently have zero on the year. And I also think that I, I feel like they're going to go run heavy against Ohio State. So I just don't feel like there's going to be a ton of opportunities for sacks. So I'm going to go under. Forced turnovers at two and a half. Ohio State forced forced turnovers at two and a half. Under. I'll go under. I'll go under. Toledo's for the past few years has been really good with um not turning the ball over. Yeah, we get only seven turnovers the entirety of the 2021 season. Toledo team completion percentage at 57.69 percent. Oh, my God, that is terrible that we even have to think about that. I'll go. I'll go under. And, and, and yes, nice. nice. <laughs> I'll go I'll over go. only because I think there are going to be a lot of like garbage throws. I'll go like, under. I'll go over. But I, like when, I said, when, it's going to be some when, garbage, garbage behind the line of scrimmage throws. When in doubt with Austin over the unders, take the under. Uh, Ohio State rushes rushing plus defense plus special team touchdowns at three and a half. Rushing defense and special teams. I'm going over. Going that the rushing team rushing. They're going to have three touchdowns on from the running backs, and there will be a touchdown from the special teams. So I will take the over. I'll go over two mostly because of the running backs. Um, Cause like you can just never, you can just never count on the other ones. Mm-hmm. I like the I, under I, here. So I juice the over Austin said. All right. All right. And the last one he has here, it has Hayden carries at eight and a half. How many, how many did he have in last game? I want to, I think it was eight. Or maybe it was six. Uh, I Austin's. see here four. Four? Four for 13. I'm going to go under. I'll go under. Um, under. Oh, wait a minute. I think 
How many total touches did he have last week? I think that's what I'm thinking of. How many receptions did he have on top of that four? Uh, he had two. Two. So he had six. That's where that's where I got the six. All right. Fair enough. All right. And those that is it. That is all of the Ask Sloopcast related to the Ohio State Toledo game. And we'll we'll get the other Ask Sloopcast questions for our uh, Snoop Picks episode coming up. All right. Yep. Uh, join us tomorrow for the Sloop Picks. Uh, tonight, uh, well, I almost went right into the end. I, I almost just ended the show right there for some reason. Uh, hey, make sure to check us out on all the things. We post uh, one minute highlights to our YouTube channel. Uh, we have a shorts channel on well, it's, it's a shorts playlist on YouTube. Uh, we also post those on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter. So if you want to check out uh, those highlights, just go go to your uh, short form video app of choice. Um, unless it's Facebook, because we're. No. No. Um, let's see what else. Ask her. I don't I got nothing else. Check out our check out our highlights. Uh, Kyle, you have anything in Kyle's corner? I don't really. I, I just got back from from some little time off here and I'm trying to get caught up on everything here. So I really don't have anything, anything in Austin's area. As we called it. <laughs> <laughs> now we good. OK, that's it. That's the end of the show. Uh, tonight's ending music will be Snarls. We played them on Monday and Tuesday. We'll play them again here on Thursday. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Snarls. <laughs>